17 tips to level up faster waiting for you in this video. The biggest issue that people leveling slow have is planning the path on how they want to travel. The amount of time you can spend in this game traveling to wrong places inefficiently will basically kill all the progress speed. So it's really important that you follow this priority to make qualified decisions. Priority 1 is follow the purple quest. Priority 2, as you see here, are blue side quests. And while you're leveling, you only want to do the blue side quests that are somewhat on the way to completing the purple ones. So you can do them in one go. Priority 3 is, if you cannot find any more blue quests or purple quests and you have reached like a dead end, try to unlock waypoints like those right here, because they will then give you access to new blue quests that you can do. Priority 4. If this is also not working, then go and do contracts. It is actually better if you're saving up your contracts until level 46, because once you are able to reach Khan and Village right here, at the contract manager, you will already be able to get the uh, the biggest amount of growth of the blue growth stones, and you should save up if this is possible. If you're reaching a dead end, um, I would at least only do this amount of contracts until you can continue otherwise. Because as you see right here, we are having 60 out of 60 contract rights. And this is how you actually want to reach level 46 with a full contract right ready. So you can then farm the uh, blue growth stones and instantly go and upgrade your weapon to 9. Sorry to interrupt, but short self promotion is needed. Currently 98.9% .9 of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. Would be amazing if we changed that. And as a little goodie, I prepared a 27 video walkthrough through all the hard quests and uh, puzzles for Throne and Liberty that are released for the open beta. So if you don't want to miss it, hit that subscribe button. A nice feature that helps you with organizing your leveling path is the codex right here in the menu, where on the adventure one, you will have all the purple quests. I obviously finished mine, but um, this is where you're taking a look at the purple quests. You will also see the rewards and all of that. And under exploration, you will see the blue ones and this will basically show you what to do. And when you're going onto the map via M, then um, you can plan on the map here. And if you're doing like a right click, for example, you can add a personal pin and that personal pin can be your location. And then you will see it in the mini map right here, which makes it really easy to navigate your way through the game. Regarding your stats that you're putting early on, you do want to focus perception. And the reason why you want to focus perception is actually the hit rate that you're getting once you reach 30 perception. That hit rate, along with the points that you're putting in, will make your attacks um, not miss the monster. And this will give you a great boost. If you are having mana issues, I recommend going with them. If you are having um, no mana issues, you can solve it with like items that give you mana wreck or something like this. Then I would go for a damage stat where usually a critical hit is quite nice early on. If you are fighting monsters, try to not kill monsters that are higher in two levels than yourself. Try to stay within your level range. If you go too high, even though if you feel really powerful, your overall kill speed will decrease and you are having um, issues keeping up with your clear speed and the majority of your experience comes from doing quests. So always try to stay within your quest and level range. Along your level progress, you will get many rewards from quests. And it's important to keep your power spike up high that you will always upgrade it. And here it's special in this game. You will not have to go city to do that. If you're going to uh, open your inventory and you are going onto the little thing right here for the equipment enchanting, you can do that wherever you want at any time so once you have enough to get a new level up on your weapon, for example, most important, but also on your armor, go and push it right away. If you are upgrading, um, for example, a green weapon and the green weapon is at plus six, you can transfer the plus six weapon into your uh, blue weapon to get some experience out of your old weapon. And you should always get the most experience from your old weapon, so always upgrade like the green one to max and then go for a blue one. 
Also important to note here is that if you are doing this, um, sometimes green items with full trades are better than blue items with like bad upgrades, no trades. And the same goes for blue items for purple items. So a fully traded uh, blue item with like full upgrade is usually better than like a clean purple one. So do not rush doing those transfers. It is viable to stay at a lower gear even though you already dropped like a higher trade gear. There's two exceptions that um, will require you not to do an upgrade at the moment. And one is once you're picking your new weapon and you're getting your starting tray weapon, do not instantly upgrade it to plus three. Once you have the materials, keep it at plus two. Because for a quest later, you will need to upgrade it to plus three. So you can save that and you don't have to upgrade like another weird weapon and you can continue in the flow of the quest. Another way where you cannot upgrade your weapon is the first green weapon that you're getting from your main storyline because if you want to get two blue weapons before level 50 you will have to put that into your lithography book so you can get the recipe to craft a blue weapon the other way is if you are joining a guild early on which is really important here then you can go and contribute to that guild and you can buy also blue weapon recipes from the guild merchant another reason why you want to have a guild early on is here you will have in the guild merchant you will have access to higher quality pots that will give you more restock and in the guild itself every time people are completing a quest in the, under the reward tab right here you will find skill books that you will help you level up your skills and now that we're already talking about skills it's actually really important that similar to gear, you always upgrade your skills when you get your books ready. Also, if you don't know um, what skills are good for a certain weapon, I highly recommend watching a class guide because if you are doing spendings into the wrong skills, this in the long term will slow your progress a lot because um, you will actually have to pay real money with a um, skill conversion book to move that experience to a different skill. Another thing you always want to keep your eyes open for to level up your skills is actually the events. Here, for example, we have an announcement that an event is coming. So um, when we are looking in the schedule right here, we will see that the, the different events that are on the map. On the map, you will see it here by hovering over those icons and getting a high rank in those events will also give you skill books. It will give you upgrade materials like Marins and stuff. So whenever you see that there's an event going on, you should do it right away. But when you're in your codex under the exploration tab, there's also some quests that require you to participate in one of those events. So also check on which events you maybe did not participate yet to fulfill those quests to do two things at the same time. Regarding dungeons, you do not want to do dungeons early. It's a waste of time. The only thing you um, do want to do is basically keep all your dimensional contract tokens until you reach level 50. So you can start doing the level 50 dungeons here that drop your first uh, purple gear. This is the best value. If points would be deducted anyways, because you're not able to get to level 50 on day one, for example, then I would obviously um, use 900 of those points and so I have like some value out of it and then continue the next day. One last tip and then that guide is over. If you are level 35, you are probably strong enough to go into open world dungeons as you see right here, like the Temple of Celia, for example. And there is a quest line that will give you three pieces of the Sophia's Praise jewelry set. If you are not able to get like a green jewelry fully traded as then, this set is worth farming and will give you a decent power spike until you're level 50. But once you are level 50, you do want to get rid of those items and uh, um, replace it because they are not tradable. Yeah, that's it. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I will try to answer all of them in less than 24 hours. Cheers, guys.